All right, so Virginia, you wrote me a letter. There we go. And you didn't describe in great detail what the issue is, but what you did say was is it is a very common thing lots of people talk about, and that is not being good enough. Did I say that right? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. All right. Now uh Go ahead. I've carried this belief, I think, since I can remember. And I probably said I feel I've come a long way, but it's there's still a lot. I think there's still more to resolve. Um, because whenever I do something like whether it's teaching or starting a new project or even hosting people. Um, I feel I have to go over the top to feel good enough. And I wish I could be lighter about things uh, because it would be, it would make life uh, a lot easier for myself and for others and I really want to get to the bottom of it and heal heal this not just for me but for others as well well sure and and all of that becomes I mean it it, it comes about because you got you got embedded as you were growing up you know mm -hmm. cultural family experiences specific events in your life all get together and they say, Virginia, you're not good enough. Yeah. But, and, and I know you've worked with specific events. In fact, you and mm -hmm. I have worked on some specific events. Mm -hmm. So one of the clues here is since it's still not done yet, that mm -hmm. we didn't get as thorough or as deep as maybe mm -hmm. we could have. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a clue. Mm -hmm. Progress. Yes. Complete. No. Mm -hmm. I'm inclined, I'm not, I'm not sure where we're going to go here. So, so I'm, I'm listening to unseen therapists and I'm getting notions and one thing and another, hold on a minute. But anyway, before we were interrupted by the telephone, my apologies, my apologies. Mm -hmm. We were talking about specific events, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting more urged at the moment to start at least to begin with, we'll see where it goes, to do a lot of reframing on this issue. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Um, I hear from lots of people, well, I'm, I'm not good enough. Okay. Great. What does that mean? Define, define what not good enough means. Hmm. Well, I guess something in me tells me I need to be in a certain way, to be accepted, to be loved, um, and doesn't feel like that. And doesn't feel like that as I am. So I need to put a lot of effort, extra effort, uh, just to deserve. <laughs> to be accepted um, or loved. Well, okay, I hear that. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. But let me get to that question a little bit more. When you define good enough, there's a level, there's a level <laughs> somehow. There's a, there's a line someplace. Above the line, you're good enough and below the line, you're not ah. good enough, okay? Where is this line? Ah. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it, but now that you say it, I think it's quite high. Well, where? Mm -hmm. It's, I would say, impossible. It's an impossible standard to meet. Oh, logically. Okay. Logically. <laughs> well, okay. So, but well, when it no, comes not, to not, it. Not, <laughs> not logically, emotionally. Emotionally, yes. Okay. Let me logically, lo I understand the emotional part. But logically, are you good enough? Whatever that means. Yeah. 
Well, let's explore that some. I know, I know one of the things you do, besides working with optimal EFT and enzyme therapists with other people, okay? Mm -hmm. But one other thing you do is you translate English mm -hmm. to Spanish and Spanish to, I mean, you teach that kind of thing and you translate, yes? yes? Yeah? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Are you good enough to do that? Yeah. Yeah. How, how do you know you're good enough? I know because I've had the same students for over two years and they keep coming to my lessons. They pay <laughs> to come yeah. to my lessons. They could find another teacher if they wanted, for example. All right. So in that area, whatever good enough for me, I mean, where, where, what line, where would the line be when you were no longer good enough to be a teacher of a language teacher? Well, no one would, come, would want to come to my lessons or they would come to just one lesson and they would uh, give up. Okay, so what you're saying here is your your criteria for whether you're good enough in the language area is whether or not people come to you and come back. Yeah, for example, yes. If they come back, then you're good enough. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are you good mm -hmm. enough, are you good enough to drive a car? Hmm, that one is, I've just had my driving license and oh, I'm I didn't quite know fear. that. I, I, I assume you've been driving for years. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm quite fearful of that. I did pass my test and I can't go here and there. But... Okay. I, I used the wrong example. I used the wrong <laughs> example. Okay. Are you good enough to eat lunch? Oh, sure. Yeah. You can, sure. Eat, you can eat lunch with the best of them. I can even cook it. You can even cook it. All right. Are you are you a good cook? <laughs> good enough. Yes, I'm good. You are, you are a good enough cook. All right. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, my guess is that there are many areas in your life where you don't even question whether you're good enough. You just are. Mm. Am I right? Sure. Yeah. Right. Spot on. Okay. Mm. So it's not a matter. These are all reframing questions and reframing discussions okay so so it's not a matter of being good enough in certain areas it's a matter or being good enough generally it's it's really whether or not you're good enough in certain areas because some areas you are good enough at mm -hmm. okay. let me ask you this in your opinion mm -hmm. you being the authority now okay mm -hmm. am i good enough to translate like you do <laughs> no i'm not <laughs> i don't think so no okay well because i i probably know five words in spanish mm -hmm. <laughs> so i'm not good enough not for that but <laughs> well i mean you good are good for, enough <laughs> i may be good enough in other things right yes okay mm -hmm. just like you i'm good e i'm good enough at some things and not good, like, 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 am I good enough to give birth? You can't. No, I fail miserably. Yeah. I wouldn't even try. Am I good enough to play professional American football? Oh. Uh... Yeah, I think you, if you have chosen that route, probably you would be, yes. At age 81, you think I can get out <laughs> <No>. there? <laughs> well, not now, but you have the skills, probably. Mm. Mm. Well, there was a time I had skills I don't have now, okay? Mm. <laughs> but the, the reality is I'm not good enough to play no. any professional sport. Okay. I may have had a glimpse of a possibility once upon a time okay <laughs> yeah. but i'm not good enough at mm. that now mm. ask me if i care do you care <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> 
the last thing I want to do is put it on a football pads and go out and play football. I'll, that was, something would break within 10 minutes. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. I am not good enough. I am not good mm. enough. Good enough in some areas. Not good enough in other areas. Okay. Just like you. Okay. What's the reason I bring that up, Virginia, is, is, is many people, when they say I'm not good enough, they say it in sort of a generalized way. I'm just not good enough generally. I don't, to use terms you used before, I don't deserve and things like that. Right? Mm. Okay. But the reality is, and don't let me put words in your mouth. You always want to correct me because we, I, I don't want to go, we don't want to go down some path where the assumptions are wrong. All right. So you are not good enough not in general, like you're not good enough across the board. Okay. You mm -hmm. are not good enough in specific areas, and that mm -hmm. bothers you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what are the specific areas you're not good enough in? Well, for example, um, when it comes to social interactions, that's a sensitive area. Um, uh, sometimes, a lot of the time, I feel I said the wrong thing and maybe I hurt the other person unintentionally, but maybe it wasn't even the case, but <laughs> I very easily feel um, I did something wrong or said something wrong or so that's one example um does that happen I... off does that happen often excuse me for interrupting does that happen often uh, yeah it happens often once and a day the... once, once a day no. once a week no maybe twice a week okay uh Maybe I said something to a friend and I said, oh, I, am, I might have upset her, for example. Mm -hmm. and, and then also, as you know, I am for a long time, I have felt like a call. It's, it's like a calling uh, to work uh, as a therapist. Um, it's not something that I want to do um, uh, just because, or I feel it's a calling, you see, like from the soul. And um, it's an urge that I have to do it. And um, I have recently, I made big steps, what I call big steps. That's what I was saying, I've come a long way. But uh, this feeling of not good enough uh, makes it hard, not just for me, but um, it makes it, uh, it stops me from helping others because I feel <laughs> I could be giving a lot and helping um, and others could also benefit. So it's, uh, it's so, there is an unnecessary emotional charge like before I make the steps and mm -hmm. then after I made steps, I feel, oh, maybe this didn't go so well or that could have gone better and I'm quite harsh on myself. So <laughs> it makes uh, my progress slow. Okay. And painful. <laughs> am I hearing a link? Am I I'm sorry, say it again. Unnecessary, unnecessarily painful. Painful, okay. Am I hearing some kind of a possible link, and tell me if I'm right or not, okay, between this not, you're worried about saying something wrong to somebody, mm -hmm. hurting their feelings maybe, mm -hmm. and something like that. Do I see a link between that and the, Hesitancy to go help other people? 
Yes, because uh, this is obviously people open up when you're working as a therapist and it's, it's a very delicate area and you really want to be careful and, and get it right. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, now define for me what right is. Well, it's hard, but uh, tuning in well to to the client and being very well, sensitive. Wait, I, I didn't quite get that. Do what well with the client? Tuning, tuning. Oh, tuning, in tuning. Okay, yeah. And okay. being sensitive to their feelings and um, understanding. This is something else. Understanding exactly what they are saying. Sometimes I'm afraid of not understanding what exactly the problem is and and therefore uh, not responding properly all right now now do you recognize that i have the same fear <laughs> no oh you don't well let's let's just turn the clock back a little bit in this session here okay. i said early on i don't you're going to have to correct me. I don't want to make an assumption that's wrong and go down the wrong, wrong path. So you need to correct me. Did I not say that earlier? Mm -hmm. That's my way of saying I'm afraid of getting it wrong. Mm -hmm. And I just mm -hmm. pre-frame the whole thing so that you can correct me whenever I'm wrong. Did I not do that? Yes, you did. That's because I don't want to make a mistake. And I'm likely to, because I just don't, I don't know your whole life. You and I have had other discussions and I still don't know your whole life. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know everything that happens and all of that. Uh, and even if yeah. I did, I've probably forgotten some of it because I talked to lots of people. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So it, do you consider me good enough in this field? Sure. <laughs> well, more than good enough. <laughs> all right. Well, all right. So, but let's talk about that for a minute. Because one of the things you're concerned about, about being not good enough, is not understanding and tuning into the people and things you just said, right? Mm -hmm. All right. I have the same fear. <laughs> That's why I said up front, you, please correct me because I'm, I'm, I'm likely to get this wrong. <laughs> I don't know how well I don't know how well that conversation I, I see a doubt in your face something something didn't match there tell me what that might be no it's no doubt I just want to cry <laughs> okay well what would just the tears be saying that I don't know but it's like um well, we triggered something, so let's get into it, okay? I'm not sure. I think it's because I can see how harsh I am. And when you speak, you're like so light and so accepting. That makes me want to cry. <laughs> Well, okay, but maybe the difference between us, there are some things that are the same between us, I would like to suggest. One is, I don't know what's going on and who's going to do, what the client is ever going to say or whatever. I don't know when you and I start this, where we're going to go. I don't mm -hmm. know, okay? And the, the thing is, I accept that I don't know. <laughs> and I pre-frame along the way. I'm not sure about this, but what about? You know, you'll hear me say that all the time. Yes, yes. I know, but when you say to me, it feels more. <laughs> it has a deep effect. Okay, but could you not say the same words? Similar, similar words? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I I know. <laughs> it's well, simple. Not... It's so simple <laughs> when you say it. <laughs> Well, I get, yeah, I, because you're still dealing with embedded stuff, okay? Yes. Um, embedded echoes and unresolved stuff from the past that are 
replaying when you try to do this. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's okay. We're still going to do, don't know where we're going to go yet. See, here I am again. I still don't know where we're going to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do not know where we're going to go. Mm -hmm. Now, when you don't know where you're going to go, you get all upset about it because, uh oh, I'm doing it wrong because you don't know yet. Okay. But how can you know? Yes. How can you know that about anybody? I mean, you can have clients that you've had 10 sessions with and you still don't know everything you need to know. Yeah? Yes. Yes. They will still surprise you with this incident with Aunt Sarah someplace that you never even heard about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we don't know. Part of, the pro part of the reframe here would be to allow you the idea that you really don't know, and that's okay. Nobody knows. Yes. The yes. greatest therapist on the planet doesn't know. Hmm. The, the psychiatrist with the years and years of education and the hundreds of thousands of dollars spent to get their MD degree mm -hmm. doesn't know either. Yes. Or do they know? Do they know? Do you think they know? No. They can't know. They just know a bunch of other stuff. Mm. But they don't. They do not know what's really going on with that client. Mm -hmm. But what they do, I think. Tell me if you think this is right. I'm guessing here. Okay. Mm. Notice that I'm guessing here. You hear that? Yes. I say it a lot. <laughs> I say it a lot. Okay. I'm guessing here. Okay. The psychiatrist who may be dealing with a client, even though the psychiatrist with all the degrees and everything else doesn't know what's really going on with the client. They don't know the client's history, the life, all of that. And they never will know it all. But, but because they have the degrees and the pieces of paper and all the study and everything else, they have the credentials that say so ha 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 mm -hmm. yet they don't know any more than you do as far as what's <laughs> going on with, am i right <laughs> it's nice to see it that way yes well tell me if i tell me where i, I missed that okay i have to say uh the credentials add on to the not feeling good enough because like in the country I am, they don't recognize uh, complementary therapies in any way, <laughs> for example. Okay. Well, okay. So that's a real practical thing for someone who doesn't deserve and all that. And besides <laughs> all of that, you don't even have the right credentials. And the country, the government says, you're not good enough. It adds on the reasons for not feeling good enough yes <laughs> well, well legally legally are you allowed to help somebody yeah yeah i mean as long as you say i'm not a doctor like you do <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. well when you tell people you're not a doctor do they say oh well i'm leaving here you're not good enough <laughs> no. Well, what do they say? I don't think they're that bothered, actually. You don't think what? I'm sorry. They're not that bothered. They're not that bothered. Okay. No. All right. Because they're more interested in, well, what's going to happen in this session more mm -hmm. than anything else. Okay. Yes. yes. Not, whether, not whether or not some doctor is going to give me a, a pill to take care of everything or come up with mm -hmm. some wise thing they learned once upon a time and they're loaded with wisdom and mm -hmm. somehow or other, correct me if I'm wrong. All right. Correct me if I'm wrong. Somehow or other at that moment, you are as good enough as a doctor <laughs> in their, in their mind. Well, Yes, and, and some of them has been let down by doctors actually. And well, some, some clients just absolutely despise doctors. Some, yes, okay. 
I'm not I'm not kicking doctors in the teeth here, but this is this is what, where clients are coming from. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can't yes. stand the doctors. They will say, you know, they're arrogant people and they, all they do is give me drugs and they I feel worse and they don't do anything. Mm -hmm. I hear that. I hear that a lot. Do you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. And when you hear that, are they not also saying, you must be just as good as a doctor or better mm -hmm. than a doctor because I want to hear what you have to say. I mean, yes. somehow or other that's being communicated. Yes, 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 absolutely. It's like it could be their last hope sometimes. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But when you hear that, you're not really saying that to yourself. You're saying, you're saying I'm wondering if I deserve to be here. Mm. Yes. Who am I? Who am I to be here? Who am I to be here? Well, the client seems to think <laughs> there might be some. Let me ask you this. Do you know when it comes down to getting results therapeutically for the client, mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. you know more about how to do that than they do? Sure. Yes. <laughs> well, you said that rather congruently. Yes, yes. So you have something valuable. To, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but do I say it right? You have something valuable to offer them? Yes, yes. Hmm. Now, it may be, it may not be the pinnacle, magical, absolute best ever, ever, ever. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot better than what they have, what, what, what they're doing for themselves. Yes. I don't yes. want to impose my thoughts. Is that, no, is that, it's, is that it's, truly, truly your belief or just something it's, that sounds good it's, to say? It's spot on because I have seen it very recently. Like um, I had a client, we did a session and um, I suggested the, your book, The Unseen Therapist. Um, and she's been reading it and we've been exchanging uh, conversations. She's struggling to do it by herself. Uh, and it's clearly harder to do all of this by yourself. And it took me some time to say, if you want, we can have another session because I didn't want to say too quickly or to impose it. But it, it was what she needed, another session. Okay, well, the truth about that book is it's a very intro book. Mm -hmm. And while it can be useful for some people on some issues, the more challenging issues, which I gather this client has, mm -hmm. the book is just going to be an intro. It's, mm -hmm. it's not going to take you anywhere near what you can take her to. Now, did yeah. I say it right? Yes, and also it takes discipline to read it, to do the exercises by yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay, but you had this hesitancy. You had to wait a while before you finally said, well, you mm -hmm. know, we could go a little further, however you worded that. All right. Yes, exactly. So, so, so tell me again, the wheels are turning. You're getting some replays. You're getting an inner voice. <laughs> and what's it telling you? You're not good enough yet. Uh, maybe she'll reject you. Maybe if you go a little step further, you're not able, quite able to deliver and you're going to feel bad. Tell me. Yeah, it's like... Um... It's a very delicate and personal and sensitive issue for her. And uh, you need to be uh, very prepared, very <laughs> spiritually evolved <laughs> to be at the right level to help her. So, wait a minute. Wait, wait. I got to stop. We're not there you. yet. <laughs> well, I've got to stop you there because you use some terms. You've got to, I think you said you got to be very prepared. You, did you not yeah. say that? And yes. 
spiritually evolved. Yes. Okay. So this client now who has an issue that is more challenging than the book can handle, it can only mm -hmm. introduce her to some things. You mm -hmm. recognize that. Mm -hmm. You have more skills in this, in this area than she does. Mm -hmm. But yet you're also overlaying it. Mm -hmm. Now, always correct me. Always correct me. This is what I'm hearing. Yes. You're, al you're always overlaying it with, I've got to be very prepared. Now, we, don't, we have to define very, and we have to de define what prepared is, because mm -hmm. you know, the, those are the kind of things that you can never match up to, depending upon how high very prepared is, okay? Yes. yes. <laughs> and spiritually evolved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's potentially as big as it gets and who gets there yeah how many people you, do you know that are completely spiritually evolved <laughs> yeah not well, many well mm. can you do can you name one <laughs> yeah i've got some Oh, really? People in mind, yes. Well, I'd like to meet them because I've never uh, been anybody that's completely <laughs> spiritually evolved. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I, I tend to idealize people also. Am I, am I spiritually evolved? Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, in my view i i'm like you i have a long way to go mm -hmm. okay that's my mm -hmm. view okay mm -hmm. all right so anyway let's get back to you've got to be in order to help this person all of a sudden the fact that that you are more acquainted with where she could go with all of this than she is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. substantially more acquainted you mm -hmm. still have to be very prepared and spiritually evolved or you can't go there mm. okay so how prepared do you have to be well i guess i always feel i need more experience but i do have quite a lot already young Sometimes I feel a lifetime would be, would not be enough. Well, yeah. Yeah. And I deal with the same thing. I, I, you know what I did to prepare for this right here, this mm. meeting we're having right now, is I looked at your email and said, hmm, not good enough. Huh. I think maybe I should do some reframing here and ask her what that really means. That's <laughs> all the preparation I did. <laughs> that's it yeah okay i didn't mm -hmm. do any other preparation okay mm -hmm. and i am not the least bit concerned about my spiritual involvement you know why because mm -hmm. i'm going to turn it over to unseen therapists i listen this is you may think this is a funny statement but it's a very true one i just work here right you're an assistant <laughs> i am an assistant yes <laughs> i my skills which I'm trying to teach you and you're getting mm -hmm. better and better and better at mm -hmm. or at how to be an assistant. Yes. I know it, that intellectually, logically, but yeah, when okay. it comes to it. All right. All right. We're still reframing. We're still yes. reframing. We're, we're trying to pick all this stuff apart. Yes. So that, it, so that when we, we get down to the emotional piece of it, hopefully it's going to be easier to fade. Mm -hmm. all right but anyway so you've got to be very prepared you don't even know what that is <laughs> right mm -hmm. or do you know what it, experience how, would you, how okay. would you how would you know if you were very prepared for this client yeah or experienced we can say experienced <laughs> oh, okay all right so how much experience do you have well few years mm. okay well that's a whole lot more than a few days yes it's a whole lot more than the client yes all right mm. 
But you see, even if you had 10 times the experience, you could always have more. Yes. I could always have more. I'm getting more mm -hmm. as we speak. As mm -hmm. we speak. <laughs> All right. Okay. So I get the idea, Virginia, that this discussion is landing a bit academically. Mm -hmm. In your head, you recognize all of this, but you don't own it yet. Mm -mm. Okay. Give me your sense of it. Have we just been tiptoeing around doing nothing, or did you think it actually started to uh, dissolve some stuff? No, it dissolved. As I said, from the very beginning, when I was, I was moved, actually, I, I was tearful. When you started talking about it, when you started reframing, um, I started seeing myself with more compassion for some reason. I don't even know what you said that did the trick. Oh, okay. So something is dissolving. All right. Well, we did a little movement someplace, somewhere. Okay. All right. And one reason we're recording this so you can go over it. You, know, mm -hmm. you can play it again and again, and chances are something that was said, something you said, etc. Oh, it hits a little, uh, a little more deeply. Hits a little more deeply, mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. okay. Because being very prepared and spiritually evolved, you'll never get there. <laughs> <laughs> never, <laughs> never. How can you possibly be very prepared and spiritually evolved? <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm also hearing in all that we've said so far that there is a fear involved. If you move forward, if you say something to the client or the client might say, oh, I get my hopes up and now you have a fear you won't deliver. Hmm. And that's not going to feel very good. And that, will, that will stop you in your tracks. Do I have that right? Yes. Yes. All right. If you could, if you could wrap your thoughts around what a voice in your head might be, what words a voice in your head might be saying at that moment, what would that be? It's a, it's a double fear. I was trying to tune in when you were saying. Uh, one part of me is afraid of um, uh, like uh, messing up with her. You see, it's like um, it's a sensitive thing for her, very delicate and hurting. It's, I know I won't hurt her, but it's like uh, stopping her hopes to heal or <laughs> preventing will... her from healing. She will be disappointed in you. Yeah, the other uh, is failure. You see, it's a fear of failure, also very, I guess. Right. Yeah, I, 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 I got that, but let's get behind it for a moment, okay? All of us, almost daily, if we think about it, fail at something or other. <laughs> We're forever mm -hmm. saying things and talking about things and trying things, and whatever. And, Sooner or later, we fail at something. We're always failing. Okay. And we're succeeding, too, here and there in the other place. All right. When you eat mm -hmm. lunch, you succeeded, right? Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was supposed to be funny, okay? <laughs> Sorry, I was... <laughs> okay. All right, okay. So, you're going to fail. I fail. Everybody failed. We, we, we failed. Failure is part of the landscape. That's how we exist. I don't know anybody who does nothing but succeed. I've never, I've never met that person. Okay. But there's a, somewhere within you, there is a penalty if you fail. That's why you'd be afraid of it. Afraid of yeah. fear. There's a penalty. Yeah. Can you tell me what that penalty might, rational or otherwise, what is that penalty?
Well, I don't know if this makes sense, but um, uh, the big fear is uh, being a sinner. <laughs> you see, it's like going to hell ultimately because um, you see, if I do something wrong, letting her down, hurting her feelings, you're a bad person. <laughs> this okay. is quite uh, deep and unconscious. I'm trying to think because logically, I don't know what that. Well, would be. I think you're, I think you're doing very well uh, mm. because sinner sinner suggests some kind of um, religious impact. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so are you are you hearing the voice of God, the voice of a religious leader, the voice of your parents? Don't disappoint anybody, or else you're a bad person. You're a sinner. You're. Yeah, I don't know where I pick this up from, because I do believe that God is unconditionally loving and forgiving. But uh, somewhere I picked that up. I don't know where. Um, yeah, from childhood, from religion, that if you sin, you go to hell. Okay. Now, do you believe there is a hell? I guess the, the other fear... No, 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 don't answer is, that question. Answer, you, you, you skip the question. Do you believe there is a hell? No, I don't believe there is a hell now. I don't believe there is a hell, but I have, think I have replaced that belief with um, not making the most of your life. You see, it's like not full. Hmm. Making a little note. And um, not like not fulfilling your purpose. All right. It feels, most people, feels quite bad. Mm. Well, most people have no clue what their purpose is. All right. Mm. <laughs> so so they don't even know if they could fulfill it. So by that definition, just about everybody is a is a sinner, but not making the most of your life. That's in the same category to me anyway as being very prepared or spiritually involved. I mean, where do you define, what, what is making the most out of your life? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Is that an uncomfortable question for you? No, no, I was wondering whether you were, you wanted me to answer. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, using your gifts uh, well, multiplying them. <laughs> so we are born with certain gifts and talents, and we, we are supposed, this is the belief, to use them well <laughs> for our benefit and for others, and to learn, to, yeah, make them grow, well, how would, yeah. how would you know, number one, what your gifts are? And number two, how would you know if you were using them to the ultimate level? <sighs> well, if I'm using them well, I wouldn't feel a sense of frustration, I don't think. <laughs> and... Um, and you know what they are because it's generally what you're good at and um, what you like doing. Those are your gifts. All right. Being able, this is my view. Okay. Being able to use your gifts 
to the ultimate when ultimate mm -hmm. isn't even defined and nobody really knows what that is okay. mm -hmm. is a recipe is a recipe for disappointing yourself over and over and over again because there's this you mm. set up this level that is undefined someplace you've got to reach yeah. it and if you don't you've got some kind of hard to define voice saying you're a sinner yeah mm -hmm. mm. explain to me why i should adopt that belief <laughs> I, see, I don't have that i don't have that belief at all i i don't have any anything anywhere close to that okay but explain to me why i should have it well i didn't even think there was an option of not having it, <laughs> well, there, must the be, it there, there must be because i don't have it <laughs> <laughs> okay. i never saw it any other way well, that's why we're reframing, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do not have anything that says, do that right or you're a sinner. I don't have anything like that anywhere. But if it's useful and it should be there, tell me why I should have it. No, I don't recommend it. <laughs> Um, well, you bought it, you bought it, but you wouldn't recommend it. That's a reframing no. question, obviously. Okay, but yes, go with it if you would. Yes, I, I can see it doesn't serve me. <laughs> um, well, who does it serve? Does it serve anybody? Not really. Does it serve your client who maybe you won't do it just right? No, it, certainly. It, it doesn't serve the client? Well, mm -hmm. it keeps you from maybe not doing it right. Yeah. So is that a service to the client? No, certainly not. Hmm. No, it's illogical. Yeah, but I want to get to the emotional. Yeah, yeah, we're in into logical territory, but but even emotionally, does it help the client emotionally? No. And, well, wait a minute. After all, you're not going to go to this. You're not even going to attempt this more advanced area for this client. Okay, and maybe you'll get there, and maybe you won't if you did attempt it, but. The fact is, if you don't go there, if you don't attempt it, then you 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 don't you don't have the possibility of feeling bad because the client didn't achieve what you thought they should achieve. Hmm. So that's a good thing, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> No, sorry, I lost you a little bit. I know I'm I'm frame. scrambling your I'm scrambling your head a little bit. I can see it in your eyes. So. <laughs> yes, I got a bit confused. <laughs> okay. So here's your client. Mm. And your client needs to go to some deeper level. Yes. And your your own thought is, oh, oh maybe you won't get there. You don't have enough experience you know yeah so don't even try it because maybe you uh, will fail okay yeah and so that's a good thing because the client will then not have to feel bad if they didn't if we tried it and didn't work okay that's a that's a mm -hmm. good thing okay but the other thing is we tried it maybe it did work or maybe it would work and then you know yeah yeah it would not serve the client to not risk it. All right. So who does it serve? Nobody. And you wouldn't recommend it to me? Certainly not. <laughs> hmm. Okay, let's bring an unseen therapist here for a we've done, we've yeah. done We've done a fair amount of, I don't know where <laughs> we're going to go with unseen therapy. It won't be a specific <laughs> event thing, however. 
Uh, yeah. It'll be more of a reframing. Mm. I don't know. Maybe we'll get to a specific. Event. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where where it goes. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, close the eyes. Close the eyes. Just take the deep breath and relax. And recall the loving moment. And just nod your head whenever you're, whenever you're there. Okay, so we're gonna, Unseen Therapist has been listening in all this time, okay? And all about the, I'm, I'm a sinner and all the, all the stuff that gets in the way of moving forward and all the stuff that somehow or other seems to impact your not being good enough, whatever that even means, okay? And she recognizes that, that you wouldn't recommend that set of beliefs to me or to anybody. It's not even useful if the client wants to go someplace and you have a chance of getting there to not risk it, so to speak. Right. But she's also understanding. She understands that as young you are born developed in your own culture, you have your own family, your own religious inputs, all these things come in. And they get together and they somehow or other say, uh oh, you better do it right. Or you're going to be a sinner, or you're going to disappoint somebody. Don't ever do that. That's a penalty. You don't want to do that. You want to be a good little girl all the time. These are the kinds of things that the culture, the religion, maybe the family and so on, tends to build within you. Unseen therapist understands that. She, she's not gonna advise anybody else to do these things either, to adopt all these beliefs, okay? But she understands that you have them, and that's fine. And she invites you on to her own hot air balloon. It's you. Virginia, have you ever been on a hot, hot air balloon? Mm, no, but I can imagine. Okay. There you are in the hot air balloon and it's stuck to the ground because there's a bunch of ballast on the floor of it. All that weight is holding it down. And each of those sandbags represents beliefs. I'm not good enough. Do it right. Do it right. Are you going to be, dis you're going to disappoint somebody. Do it right. Or there's some kind of penalty. Do it right. Whatever right is. Nobody knows what right is. Don't work with somebody to achieve a goal. You got, you got the responsibility to do the whole thing yourself. Right? That's what one of the sandbags says. So unseen therapist says, well, okay, look at these sandbags, Virginia. And pick one up that maybe you would like to let go of so this hot air balloon can soar in the skies and give you some freedom. There's all these sandbags on them. They have little labels on them. Do any of those sandbags with a label stand out to you? If, if so, can you tell me what the label is? Yeah, it's do it right or you will go to hell. Ah, do it right or you will go to hell. Now, there's a beautiful belief. I think, I, I think you and I should write a book that says do it right or you will go to hell. Uh, it will obviously be a bestseller. Uh, it, everybody will buy the book because they'll want to know what right is and they don't want to go to hell. Okay, So you and I, we can get rich. We can get rich doing this. All right. Are you willing to throw it overboard? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Toss it overboard. All right. Mm -hmm. Do it right or you'll go to hell. Okay. <laughs> Out of all the people that you know in this world, should anybody go pick that up and, 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 and use it for themselves? Mm. No. 
Is it a useless sandbag? Yes. Does it keep you from growing yourself? Yes. Does it inhibit your possibilities with your client so that your if you have that sandbag, your client is disadvantaged. Would that be true? Yes. All right. Without it, now we have an advantage. Am I saying that right? Yes. All right. Don't let me impose words on you now. Okay. Don't let me impose words. So there we are. There's another sand. There's lots of sandbags. There's lots of them. Is there any other one there that you see has a label on it that maybe you could throw overboard? Do it right or you will let people down. All right. Do it right or you will let people down. All right. So unseen therapist says, well, okay. The only thing is nobody knows what do it right means, including the client. The client might have the idea do it right means, well, this particular issue is now going to go. But they don't necessarily have that. You don't know what they have, really. But maybe that's what it is. Do it right or what? Say the words again. You will, you will let people down. Do it right or you will let people down. Okay. So are you willing to throw, throw that one overboard? Yeah. Okay. Now, you just threw it overboard. Do it right or you'll let people down. So it's overboard now. And now maybe you can feel the hot air balloon maybe just start to maybe want to rise in the air a little bit because there's a little less weight going mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. But you, over, you look over and you say, do it right or you will let people down. Now, Unseen Therapist says, I don't think, Virginia, you would want anybody else to pick that one up. So why don't we change the label? I'm going to give you a suggestion, but maybe you want to change it even differently than the suggestion. The suggestion would be do the best you can so all can benefit as best they can. Mm. Now, yeah, is that feels, what? Say it again. No, it feels really good. Mm. All right. Mm. So, all right, now what we're going to do with that sandbag, if it seems okay to you in your imagination, is we're going to bring it back into the hot air balloon. And we're going to take that new label, do your best so that everybody can benefit their best, or however I worded that. And we're going to change that from a sandbag to helium, which makes, which will fill the balloon, help fill the balloon and help move it towards the skies, do your best, do your best, do your best, mm. do your best. What else could be expected of you? Give it a mm. try. Something good may come of it. Give it a try mm. and you'll get experience. Don't give it a try and you won't have any experience at all. Mm -hmm. How's that for a reframe? No, oh, it feels great. All right. Mm. So now you have some more helium going up and you have less sand and more helium, okay? And look on the bottom and here's more sandbags. Is there any other sandbag there that might have some label on it that might not be that useful? Yeah, something like, if you get it wrong, you will hurt other people. Ah, all right. If you get it wrong, you will hurt other people. All right. Is that true, by the way, logically or emotionally or any way? Yeah, I think that's true. Actually. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Explain to me how that's true. Mm. 
Yeah, sometimes you see you make a careless comment or you don't have so much clarity at the time and you say something that hurts the other person. It's happened in the past. Yeah. Even unintentionally, but it's happened. Well, my you're co- going through a tough time, whatever. Yeah, okay. And so everybody does it. Do you realize I do that myself? <laughs> No, I'm serious. Yeah, it's, it's hard to imagine, but I guess you do because you're human. Yeah. Yeah, there are times I try to crack a joke and it just dies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just flat out dies. It becomes insulting because I'm, I'm thinking their head is someplace other than where it really is. <laughs> hmm. I will sometimes make a sexually oriented joke hmm. to someone who's had sexual abuse. And I'll do that on purpose because I'm testing to see whether or not that really triggers them. Okay. I actually am purposely trying to trigger them to see it's a test. Okay. So I'll use some kind of off color sexual oriented joke or something. Mm. And sometimes they'll just sit there, sit there and laugh at it, which is great because that means we've, we've made headway, but they're also telling, otherwise they're telling me, uh, uh, Okay. Uh uh-uh. uh, that didn't land at all. We didn't go as far as you thought we went, Gary. Okay. So tell me what that what that sandbag says again. If you get it wrong, you will hurt other people. If you get it wrong, you will hurt other people. Is it possible to change that? If you just got, if you get it wrong, you just learned something that could help somebody. Yeah, and also the other person can learn from the experience. Yeah. So if you get it wrong, that's a that's a place where we can learn and improve. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can we turn that into helium? Yeah. All right. So that sandbag now is not weighing things down. It's it's putting helium or whatever it is goes up inside that balloon to to lift it off the ground. And now maybe it's lifting a few feet off the ground. Uh, is that possible? Yes. All right. Yes. And you're starting to, it's lighter. It's mm-hmm. lighter. We are reframing some of the sandbags. Mm-hmm. Now, any other sandbags there that uh, might be weighing you down? Um, Yeah, like you have made many mistakes already. Hmm. You have, okay, all right. Well, I got that. Uh, but you, have, <laughs> you have made many mistakes already and... People have been devastated, would that be true? Their lives have been screwed up forever. Is that true? No, but I feel guilty. And it weighs. It weighs. Okay. Hmm. All right. So unseen therapy. Yeah, okay. Got it. You have made mistakes. Mm -hmm. When you get to the point where you've never made any mistakes, would you let me know? You know? I'm only just human. Well, okay. (laughs) This will be a similar reframe to the one we've already done. I've already made mistakes and boy, have I learned from them. Mm. Would that be a true statement? I must say that's a hard one because the way is quite heavy. 
Uh, did somebody was somebody actually damaged by something mistake you made? No, not really. Mm. No, but the regret is big, even if I haven't done anything terrible, but uh... but the regret is big. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, unseen therapist says is going to be front and center here for the moment and say, ah, let's take this regret that you feel. I, there may be several things you've done and you have regret for them. Right? Because that's part of living in this world, by the way. There's no way you can go through this without having some kind of guilt, some kind of regret. I mean, there's nobody, nobody they wouldn't like to turn back the clock and redo a few things. Nobody. That includes you. But these are ballasts in your hot air balloon. They will keep you down. So let's take this sandbag, says Unseen Therapist. And let's put it someplace in your body where it really feels heavy, the one that says you've made all these mistakes, where, where would you put it? Mm, probably on my chest. On your chest. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So it feels heavy on your chest. All right. So we're going to give this to unseen therapists. The metaphor is, ah, oh, we've got this sandbag and it's so heavy on the chest. Things that I have done, we're not just zeroing in now on any one specific event. We're kind of gathering them all together because we're more interested in the response to them. So Unseen Therapist says, well, okay. Virginia, got it. Got it. Yes, you've made some mistakes. Amen. Everybody in this separated dream world makes mistakes. Everybody. Everybody. And you have a choice. You can either let them stay in your chest, or you can learn from them and let them gradually dissipate. So Unseen Therapist says, what we're going to do is imagine if you can. Virginia, each, this, this, this sandbag, we're going to shift it a little bit to be a bag of heavy rocks. Okay. Still the same size has sandbag, still. I see the tears. Where are they coming from? Where are they coming from? Well, I guess I was trying to remember all the little things i regret all right so all right that's good that's good because that's exactly where we're going here with this all right because each one of those rocks is one of those things you regret all right would we say feel guilty about is that also a good word accurate word yeah it's both it's regret and guilt okay so Unseen Therapist says, okay, let's take one of these rocks out. And let's take a look at it. It's a specific, it's something that happened. It's something that happened. And it floats around in front of you. And it said, it's, just re, it's got regret, guilt, wish I hadn't done this kind of thing. And Unseen Therapist helps you with it. Takes a look at it. And says to you and asks you a question. This thing happened in the past. Why does it need to bother you now? And what's the answer? There is no reason. Okay. 
Well, then with unseen therapist's help, what she's going to do is take this rock, this regret rock, and turn it into a little angel with a smile on the face, maybe a, some harp, a harp, some wings, and maybe, you know, a harp or something like that, a smile on her face. Forgiveness being her general demeanor. And the rock being this forgiveness angel flies off into the cosmos. Where it belongs. Are you able to do that, at least academically? Mm, yes. Okay. And now we're going to take another rock and float it out, out of the scent, out of the bag, and float it in front of you. Another regret. Another thing that doesn't really serve you in current time. Doesn't serve you or anybody else in current time. Am I correct in saying that? Mm, yes. And unseen therapists with a nice, beautiful song, as a matter of fact, pretty melody, shifts the rock into this little forgiving angel who then floats off into the cosmos. I see the tears. Are we, is this a useful process for you? Yes. Mm -hmm. right, we're, we're now going to turn this over to you, Virginia, to let you take this heavy rock-filled bag. Take the regrets out of it one by one. Work with unseen therapists to turn them into forgiveness angels and float them off. Then another, and float it off. And as you're doing that, recognize this is perhaps the one remaining sandbag or rock bag that we are now going to, as these rocks float off, going to allow the helium in the hot air balloon move us skyward into freedom mm -hmm. now i know it's a it's a metaphor but do your best with that take your time rock by rock and whenever you've gone as far as you can go just open your eyes and we'll talk take your time Okay. All right. Open the eyes. 
Open the eyes. Mm. So I'm curious, this last part, were you finding yourself resisting it, going along with it? Where were you on that? No, it was really good. It was really good because um, I could feel the forgiveness and the like the love and the how unnecessary it was to carry that and hold on to to that regret. So I was seeing each specific event floating off <laughs> like an angel. And uh, yeah, it was really taking the weight off and to the point that the hot air balloon started going up. Uh, yeah, it was it was really good. Um, like I didn't feel judged. Um, and, and there was no point in holding it. Uh, there was love. It was all replaced by love. So it was great. <laughs> Thanks. Now that that session that we just did, together with all the reframes we did, we did a lot of reframing building up to that. Yeah. Okay. And I reframes don't always land beautifully just because you want them to. <laughs> mm. And sometimes it takes a while to revisit them. Oh, I didn't see it quite that way the second time or third time or fourth yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> through it. Okay. Mm. But I think. You know, that refra all that reframing, that lead up reframing, mm -hmm. more particularly the session itself is the kind of thing, I'm going to send you this recording, that you mm -hmm. can play yeah. several times. And I'm thinking each time you, you replay it is probably, I, I don't, yeah. we don't know until you do it, okay? But probably going to land a little more, land a mm. little more, land a little more, freedom, yeah. freedom, freedom. That's my yeah. guess anyway. Okay. <laughs> Mm. does it feel that is that is that possibility in there someplace yeah no it was really great because i have worked on this a lot i even had a list of things of regret that i had worked on by myself but somehow doing it like this was very powerful mm. well what you might do is take that list of regrets and when you get to the rocks and the regrets and all of that, uh, take, I mean, stop the recordings just so you have lots of time. Okay. Yes. And just put the, re open your eyes. That's one regret. That's a rock, you know, and do it for that and do it for that. Yes. Do it for all the regrets and do it several yes. times. Yes. Um, hopefully that's going to bring you more levels of freedom. Yeah. Hmm.